Thing. Uh, we'll continue with Victor and Pera because they talk about dual track. So let's go. Hi there. I think Victor, you are muted. Right. Now, Pera? Now. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So let's start. Yeah. yeah for it. Okay, then hello everyone and thanks for joining us on this talk and, and this half an hour we are going to talk about two things. First of all is what is dual track and the second one is how are we implementing or trying to implement it at other in the Spain. So let me introduce uh, first Victor. Victor Sola is the UX director at Adelin de Spain. And he has taken the leadership of, of this initiative uh, in our company. And he has involved people from all different domains. And finally, after some months of hard work, dual track is finally a thing. So thank you, Victor, for your efforts. Uh, thanks, Pera, for the introduction. Uh, so let me introduce you, Pera. Pera is an agile coach at the Winter Spain. And he has been working the last five years helping all the product teams in the Winter Spain to become more agile. Also, Pera and, and his team have been involved in the creation of the initiative of World Track, trying to make it fit with our way of working at Spain that it's uh, scratch. So I think that with, with that, we can, we can start, right, Pera? Right, so let let us explain what we mean or what we think dual track is. And dual track for us is is a concept that describes the product development process that any agile team or empowered agile team follows to work on both discovering the next right thing to build, uh, that should be one track, and building the, the things right, that's the second track. And how these two kinds of work happen at the same time within the same team. And this model, uh, dual track, have agile and lean principles in mind because they well, it helps us to satisfy better our users and customer needs, which is one principle. Uh, and while taking a small, uh, small steps of invalidating things, building things is more, and so that we minimize uh, waste. And what we understand for discovery uh, under this track we consider any kind of work we do as a team in order to understand what we should build next so we can uh, optimize the, the threat of not investment of the team and what we understand for, the, for delivery is everything we do uh, to build the things right and to deliver value to our users and, and customers so uh, these two tracks, in fact, uh, this is a representation. Uh, these two tracks happen in parallel. Discovery and delivery, uh, they they happen at the same time. Normally, in, as if you work uh, with a Scrum, they happen in every sprint, and it's the responsibility of the team to balance accordingly the the, the number of items they do per sprint of of each of of the tracks, right? And the main thing to highlight here is um, that almost every new thing that, or, or every every new feature that uh, our team builds, that's represented on the delivery track, uh, it should have gone through the discovery process in previous sprints. And the idea behind that is that we don't want to spend time building things that nobody will will use or nobody wants. Uh, instead, they are great ideas, but so so that's it. And uh, the idea is that it happens continuously and, and, and at the same time. OK, before, before jumping into the next slide, let me, because they are telling me Pera, that uh, people cannot hear me very well. Let me check, because they, they are going to advise me when one is working. I think it's better now. I think it's the volume. But but I hear you. Yeah, you okay. hear me well, but I don't think that in the conference uh, I'm, okay. they are hearing me very well. Let, let me disconnect uh, the headphones and let's try uh, to see how it works, okay? Okay. Okay, so I hope that this is working better now. Um, so Pera uh, was explaining a little bit uh, the, the main concept, no? That is that we have these two tracks that are happening in parallel. So, okay, that's great. 
So we, we have more or less two types of work, right? The discovery work and the delivery work. But there's a risk on that because, because of the skills of certain profiles, profiles could tend to just focus on one of the tracks. So this is a concept that we want to emphasize, that it's very important, um, that it's that there's two tracks, but there's just one team, and that the whole team should be and can be working in the two tracks. Uh, it's, it's important that developers are engaged on understanding why are we doing things so that they participate uh, in, the, in the discovery track. This is uh, a key message that we want to deliver today. Um, so now that we more or less understand the, the general concept, let's uh, see how are we doing this in Spain. So yes, um, Dual Track is a, a, a strategic initiative in in Adelante, Spain, and that follows or expands other uh, strategic initiatives that uh, had happened before under the, the scope of product development. So at the beginning, we started with PIC two years ago. And, and the idea behind PIC is was, it was to, to redefine the way we work at our company. And PIC uh, start, uh, well, uh, stands for Prioritize, Empower, Align, and Knowledge, as all of you probably know. And we work with OKRs across all the company. And we rely on self-sufficient and autonomous teams in order to impact those OKRs. So after this move, what we saw is that uh, our teams were working uh, in, in Scrum, uh, but they had a lot of room for improvement because almost, well, uh, the Scrum of each team, it was their Scrum, if you understand. And that's why we launched the, the Scrum Revamp Initiative. And here, the, the purpose was to reboot Scrum, to set a common understanding and a common ground of its events and artifacts in order to take the full advantage of the framework. And for doing that, what we, well, we developed some specific trainings uh, and after that, some months of mentoring and coaching teams. And finally, after a team is revamped, is where uh, dual track can enters because, uh, because once a scrum is well understood and established, is where we can add a new practice on top of it to make teams improve their product discovery in this, in, in this case. So before moving to the next uh, to the next slide, um, let me say that this order, I think, particularly, is quite important because you need a good foundation of team dynamics and way of working before adding more complexity. And here, with dual track preceded by Scrum, uh, we are or we think that we are strengthening peak with it. Okay, thanks, Pera. So Pera, explain a little bit um, how it started. No, which is the process we followed. We started with peak, then. Uh, uh, we follow with the Scrum Revamp, and now uh, we are introducing dual track. But why do we start this initiative uh, in Spain? So we detected that we were having some issues, uh, mostly regarding uh, product discovery. Let's let's cover that in in a second. The first one uh, it was uh, short term thinking. No, so as as Pera mentioned, we work with Peak uh, in Spain. Peak is based fully in working with OKRs that uh, most of you uh, probably uh, know what it's about. And OKRs are great. They give you a lot of focus and they give you a lot of alignment on the team on what you need to, to do. But the problem also with OKRs is that sometimes they give you so much focus on the thing that you need to do during this quarter that you start forgetting uh, about the thinking on the midterm. Okay, So that was one first issue that we had that was sometimes too much short-term thinking. The points number two and point number three are quite related. Um, and, and the problem there was that uh, giving a certain opportunity, teams were not exploring really uh, different solutions to attack that opportunity. Usually, teams were falling in love with the first solution um, that make sense to them, uh, and they were not exploring other options. So that was uh, uh, another problem that we, we observed. The fourth issue. Uh, was that teams probably they were jumping too early into develop the functionality, right? So instead of trying to invalidate hypothesis in the cheapest way possible, they uh, tried to invalidate the hypothesis directly building the functionality uh, into production. And and of course this is uh, this is a problem because uh, it makes things a little bit slower and a little bit more expensive. And the fifth problem that we observe. Uh, was that discovery work was invisible. So 
That means that a lot of the work that was happening uh, around product discovery, research activities that uh, probably the UX designer was doing, or certain analysis that the people from the insights team uh, was doing, was not visible to the whole team. Uh, it was happening, but it was happening a little, a little bit uh, behind, um, uh, so without visibility. Uh, so for, for example, it was not uh, present in Jira. Okay, so this was another of the issues that, that, that we observed. Also, we wanted to achieve uh, certain things with this initiative. Let's cover that. First one, we wanted teams to focus much more, much more on the outcome. So thinking on how to uh, attack an OKR more than thinking on the outputs, no? more than thinking on which is the, the functionality that I'm going to, to build next. It's more the thinking on how I can move uh, this metric. Second thing that we wanted to achieve uh, was to facilitate innovation. Um, by expanding discovery focus, we were thinking on discover new user needs and facilitate innovation solutions. The third one was to reduce uncertainty. That means that we wanted to be more sure that the things that we put into production were going to be a success because hypotheses were going to be validated much before. So reducing the uncertainty on we are developing something, we are putting into production, but we do not really have a, a, a sense on if this is going to be a success or not. And the fourth thing that we wanted to accomplish was to uh, reduce waste. Okay, so waste uh, on the sense on not investing time on developing things that we do not know uh, if are going to be a success or not. So um, related with the, the point before, uh, with uncertainty, and also reducing waste in, in another sense that it's uh, related with the no visibility of the, of the discovery work. Sometimes because this discovery work was happening uh, under the radar, uh, probably it was taking too long. Um, and by giving it visibility, uh, we reduce uh, the, the time sometimes that we dedicate uh, to certain uh, discovery activities. Okay, so those were the, the whys we started the, the initiative. Um, let's see now how are we really doing it uh, in, in other Inter Spain. So um, first thing to say is that we are running a pilot right now with uh, three different teams and that there's three people that is in charge of uh, doing the different activities with the team that we will cover in a second. These three people are what we call research ops uh, in Spain. The research ops profiles are profiles that we have in Spain that are working outside of the product team, giving support to all product teams in, in a marketplace. And they are experts on everything related with user research. And they are, let's say, helping teams to become better uh, on, on, on everything related with, with product discovery, OK? So which are the two things that we are doing to, to implement this uh, in these uh, three pilot teams? The first one is trainings. And we will cover in a second the different trainings that we are delivering to the teams and, and what are we explaining in those trainings. And the second one is coaching. So these uh, three profiles, the research ops that are um, providing the training to the teams, they are also doing follow up with them. They are uh, going with the team, attending certain uh, team liturgies. So uh, the team uh, feels that they have the support needed in order to implement the things that we are explaining into the trainings. So which trainings are we delivering to, to these three pilot teams? The first one is a general training. Uh, the second one, the general training, it's, it's the general concepts. Uh, some of the things that we are explaining today in, in this talk is the things that, that we explain in, in, in the general training. We will see the details in a second. The second one is the opportunity tree, that is a specific technique. And the third one uh, is also another technique that we call the, the opportunity canvas. Let's go and see what we explain into this uh, general training. So. Basically, it's the things that we, we covered today uh, in, in the talk a little bit. I'm going to list it. First one, of course, it's what it is dual track and why do we think that it can, it can help the team. The second one is explaining this, no? that dual track is a model that tries to highlight that there's two types of work, that two, the two types of work are important, and that the two types of work uh, should happen uh, in a regular basis uh, on the day of day of, of the team. 
Uh, the third thing, uh, something that we uh, already mentioned, no? some of the issues that uh, we were having were related to this, that we didn't have visibility on the more product discovery work. So something that we explain is visualize the two types of work. It's very important. And, and for this, um, uh, in the initiative that uh, Pera explained about the Scrum Revamp, something that uh, we do before teams go into the dual track, uh, what we do is that we explain them different types of ways to visualize the work, uh, especially in Jira. Okay. Exactly. Um, the fourth uh, thing, something that we also commented today, very important key message involve everyone. This is a team effort. Both tracks are a team effort. It's important that uh, profiles from uh, diverse profiles participate in, in, in both of the tracks. The fifth one, it's um, something that we do also specifically as a, as a part of the training, that it's uh, how to implement dual track within a Scrum. So let's uh, uh, allow Pera to explain that uh, with a little bit more of detail. Yes, thank you, Victor. And, and what you're here, what what are you seeing here on on the screen? It's an example of a two week sprint. There are, there are two weeks, and uh, the sprint starts in one Monday, the first Monday, with the sprint planning, and finishes uh, the second Friday with a sprint review and a sprint retrospective. Uh, each day, a daily Scrum event happens to synchronize the team and to plan what they are what they are going to do. The, the following day or the, that day, sorry. And also a continuous event of backlog refinement happens every Wednesday, for example, after lunch. And, and now a question to you. In, in which events do you think that the team discusses about both kinds of work, of the discovery and the delivery track? And, and well, uh, the answer is uh, in all of them. In the, spring in the spring planning, for example, the team is where uh, they craft their spring goal and they select the, the, the items, the product backlog items that will uh, fulfill that goal so they can have a, a spring backlog. Uh, in the daily, they could decide either that the most important thing to do that day is to, to go to a user lab to understand better their user problems and enjoy the his or her UX, or maybe join efforts to finish an implementation of a new feature, maybe both, uh, it's up to them. On the backlog refinement, they could, again, either refine um, discovery discovery items that uh, maybe are for, for the upcoming sprints, for one sprint or two sprints ahead, or maybe the next quarter, in order that maybe they want to think about their OKRs, or maybe they want to, to refine uh, the next delivery items. And in the sprint review, again, they have to demo all the finished uh, items, both of each kind of, of work. And they will review, uh, of course, uh, feedback from their users, from their customers, data, and they will have conversation about uh, how to adapt the, their product backlog accordingly. And finally, in the re retrospective, it, that's more optional, but uh, of course, there are lots of topics to talk in a retrospective, but one of the topics could be how we can be better at product discovery how, or how we can be better at, at uh, developing or building things right. right? So, so that's it, mainly. Uh, thanks, Pera. So we were reviewing a little bit the, the general um, concept that we explained uh, into this training, and there's a sixth, a sixth one that it's um, the different phases that an opportunity goes through when a team detects that opportunity. Let's cover that with a little bit more, more detail. So here you have more or less the representation of, of uh, what do we think are the different phases no, that an opportunity goes through uh, from the moment that the opportunity is captured by the team until the moment that uh, we deliver the thing into production and we measure and learn. Okay. So more or less, I, I'm not going to go, to go into the details of, of each of them. Um, the idea is that there's different phases, no? Um, depending on the maturity and the knowledge that you have about the opportunity. Something that we wanted to point though, is this phase that it's very important for us, that it's the invalidate phase, okay? So re re related with one of the issues that we mentioned before, no? Uh, not jumping too early into building the solution. No? So what we want here is that when the team has understood the problem, the team started generating hypotheses, they have one hypothesis that they think that it's more or less clear, 
the, the thing that they need to do is to try to invalidate that. And that they need to try to invalidate that in the cheapest way possible. So uh, things like uh, doing concept tests or doing a smoke tests in order to spend, let's say, the minimum resources to try to have the information of if this uh, hypothesis is a good one that we need to push into the delivery or if it's not that good and we need just to discard and, and go for another one. Um, uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, that I was forgetting to, to mention is that um, we represent um, this process here in a very linear way. And, and of course, uh, this is not always like this, no? So for example, between in the delivery phase, no? between the define phase and the build phase, um, we know that this is an agile world happens more or less at the same time, okay? But we, we try to explain it like this to make it a little bit more visual and a, and a little bit more, more easy to understand for, for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we covered uh, more or less all the different concepts that we tried to explain in this uh, general training uh, about dual track. Um, I think Pera is going to explain us now uh, what do we cover in, in this opportunity tree, yeah, training. Yeah, exactly. Well, basically, an opportunity solutions tree is is what you are uh, what you are seeing right now. Uh, it's a, a visualization tool, and on the top is where we place the outcome we desire to achieve. In our case, normally is a key result we want to move. And uh, after that, after this, this key result, uh, we detail all the opportunities we detect as a team that can move that needle of that, of that key result. Notice that sometimes an opportunity can be broken into smaller opportunities because maybe there's a, that's a big block. And under, well, finally, under each opportunity is where we have all the possible solutions we have to, to cover that opportunity and uh, so that we can uh, impact that key result or that outcome. Um, as I said before, that's an, a visualization tool and that helps the team to have a common and global vision about all the opportunities, all the, all the solutions possible in order to impact an objective. So, so we believe it's, it's a really powerful tool. Um, there are three key concepts we want to highlight of this tool. The first one is it helps us to focus in, in outcomes, into moving the needle, as uh, I was saying before, instead of just delivering outputs. The second one is that it helps us to think into other possibility or other possible opportunities and solutions rather than just ones, as Victor said before, uh, so we don't fall in love. At the, at the first sight. And the third one is to help us to visualize, to visualize all our ideas. And by doing it, it's easy to go back and, and review them. It's easy if somebody from outside the team uh, has a look at it and maybe that he or she can give us feedback in maybe we haven't thought about an opportunity or a possible solution and we can add it on that map. And also it, it allows us to, to draw a plan because we will think about experiments to, to impact that solution and, and that's it. Uh, what else? We have been working with this, uh, with this tool some months ago before the dual drag initiative uh, had started in, in some teams. That's an example of uh, the Photocasa apps team. So hello, if you are, if you are there and sorry for stealing your your opportunity solution and and just to mention that's an example uh, that's here there's a middle board so if you want to or you feel curious and you want to have a look just just go to to this link afterwards we we share with you all the slides and you can have a look at the real opportunity solutions tree so that's it Cool, thanks, Pera. Um, and then let's go for, for the last training that we are explaining uh, to the teams that it's about this technique that we call the opportunity canvas. Here you have a, a representation of an opportunity canvas. This one is the original one from Jeff Patton. Um, we have created a, a version of that that is incorporating one new cell. So what is an opportunity canvas? Basically, as other canvases, it's a single page where you can represent something. Here, what we are trying to represent is all the knowledge, all the things that we know and the things that we do not know about an opportunity. So the idea is that 
when you have an opportunity in, in your team, you start feeling this, following more or less the order. Uh, uh, so you, you, you try to list which is the type of users and customers that it can impact, uh, which are the KPIs that you are going to measure, et cetera, et cetera, all the different cells. Uh, and something that we incorporated is this cell, no? but uh, it's, in, it's in blue, that we call the learning goals cell, okay? So this is something that we were missing from, from the opportunity canvas uh, from Jeff, and that we added because uh, it, it was good for what we needed, okay? So here in, the, in, this, in this cell on the learning goals, what we try is that the teams try to list everything that they don't know about the opportunity, so that they can start planning certain discovery activities they need to run in order to have a better knowledge on the opportunity. And, and more or less, this is the, the visualization of the, of the canvas. So key concepts around, around the opportunity can, canvas. The first one is that it helps teams to have a better alignment. No? So sometimes when, when teams discuss about an opportunity, there's a lot of discussion happening uh, in different team liturgies, but there's no single page where you are collecting all the information that you have about that. So this is a, a tool for that, and, and it helps that we are all in the same page when discussing a, about an opportunity. The second one is that it helps teams identify the things that they need to learn. No? So this is why we added this uh, learning goals um, cell, and, and this is important no? because before you jump into thinking in which is the solution for, for the problems that this opportunity raises, you need to probably respond before all the things that you do not know. No? So by, by, by doing this, um, probably the, the hypotheses and the solutions that you are going to think as a team are a little bit more rounded uh, and probably they can have more, more impact. And the last one, it's, it's, it's more or less what I was saying, uh, very related to the, to the, to the previous um, uh, item. So basically that's it. Um, this is what we wanted to uh, talk to you today. So before yeah. jumping into the questions, we can do a little bit of sum up, Pera. Exactly, just to, to conclude, uh, just to, to highlight that there are two types of work happening at the same time when doing product development. Uh, the second one is the team effort, and everybody should participate in both tracks. Uh, dual track has agile and lean principle in mind, so dual track is an, an we could say that is an agile practice. And and by saying that is is why dual track fits perfectly with the Scrum. But keep in mind that for reaching the full potential of both practices, make sure that your foundations are solid. So if you want to jump uh, quickly into dual track, make sure that the processes in your team are great. And the last one is that there are hundreds of techniques on, on product discovery that the teams uh, can use. But a good start is just to select a few and get used to them uh, so that the, the learning progress can the learning, the learning progress process sorry can be accelerated. And so, having said that, Yes, uh, that's it. Uh, we have here a list of materials. I want to save time for questions if there's. Uh, you will have access to different uh, contents that uh, are, are here in, in the slides. Uh, so, some are the trainings that we are uh, doing in Spain. Uh, for example, the dual track trainings or the Scrum Ruben trainings. Uh, so just uh, go to it if, if you are interested. And I think that's it. Uh, many thanks for attending the, the talk. Uh, if you have feedback, please uh, send it through through using the, the QR code. And let's jump, I would say, into questions. Two questions. Yeah. Uh, Julia, thanks for the presentation. For what you've seen so far in the pilot, have you found any conflict or difficulties when applying these techniques together with the Scrum? Um, I would say that maybe teams uh, have a problem of, of, of time to work. That would be the, the main problem, I would say. Not for the technique, but for the too many things that we have in, in, in parallel. We have the sprint, we have maybe one training of dual track, maybe we have uh, something to answer from people and comms. And so so the, the time, uh, every, every time is, is, is less to, to work on that. But so far, I think, Victor, that the feedback from the teams is, is, is nice. Yeah, I, I, we, we didn't detect uh, until now, um, let's say, any conflict with, 
with implementing those techniques, working with with Scrum team. Of course, we, we identified a lot of things that we can explain better. We are in a, in, in pilot mode yet, and, mm -hmm. and we are learning a lot from from the pilot. And and many thanks uh, to the teams that are participating in the pilot. Of course, also to the research job. Uh, so we are improving things, but we didn't detect anything specifically related with working with the Scrum and and using these techniques. Mm -hmm. Specific buffers. Uh, well, the thing it was that uh, in our teams, uh, we are cross-functional teams, and every team or almost every team has a person with a UX domain. But with dual track, what we achieve uh, is to, to visualize the work of the of the UX person, and maybe the work it was already there. Just we make it visible so the rest of the team understands understands it and we make maybe the UX closer to the to the scrum team or or more merged so he or she can also participate on the on the sprint planning on on sprint review and, and all the events because yeah, maybe I, yeah, I, so I was going to say but no no uh, we don't have time time for more I guess but uh, just to try to answer that we do not um, uh, recommend an, an specific no. buffer. But what we do recommend is that if you are not doing product discovery, that you start doing it, okay? And and if you are and if you feel that you have the more or less the same issues that uh, we detected uh, in Spain, that you start to try to put some order in order to dedicate certain time and to dedicate certain time on team liturgies, but also on on story points, etc., to to execute certain discovery activities. This this would be the the, yeah. the recommendation. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Pera, Victor. Let's continue.